Hey YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of the Samurai Monkey 42. I'm making this video to show you guys how to take apart a Type 95 Japanese NCO sword. As I've been requested by some of my subscribers. But before I start this video, I wanted to say that there's no reason why you guys should take these Japanese swords apart. One is because you're not going to find a signature inside uh, this type of Japanese swords. And two, there's a big chance that you can mess up the components, the, the screws and the paint while taking the Japanese sword apart. If it's your first time doing it, uh, it might be kind of hard for you to put it back in place again. So there's no need to take the Japanese NCOs apart. Unless really you are maybe trying to replace a part of the NCO sword or you truly want to find out all the components and how all the sword is placed together. That would be the only time that you want to take the Japanese swords apart. Well, what we're going to be needing to take the Japanese sword apart is two flat screwdrivers like this. One, this is about a one-fourth flat and half an inch flat screwdriver. Both are going to be using to remove the screws from the Japanese NCO sword. And something flat like this where you can hit the the screw so it can come out as both of the screws are connected together one from one side and one from the other side uh, once again this is a type 95 Japanese NCO sword and the way we know that um, is because it's all machine made the screws are metal screws which you're gonna find this type of screws in the type 3 but you're just gonna find one here and, and the other one but all of the components from this uh, Japanese NCO sword are made out of metal, so that's a big indication that the Japanese uh, NCO sword uh, is a Type 95. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, so we're first going to start by removing this piece here, which is the satur, the loop. You can use the same flathead to remove this part like this. You can reapply this sword this piece with the channel uh, locked in the feature. I've previously taken this uh, Japanese NCO apart so the screws are kind of loose but just know that if the screws are very tight and you are unable to remove them I would suggest to stop and do not take the Japanese sword apart because the screws will be so tight that whenever you try to take them off they are going to break so I would not take my chances try to, trying to do that. So what you need to do is you need to use the two flat heads, one on this side and one on the other side to, to take this big screw here. Another thing I wanted to mention is on the copper handle, you're only going to find a screw here on, at the top and no screw here on this side. Uh, the Japanese uh, soon figure it out that they needed another screw here for the Japanese NCO sword to be stable. So they decided to add another screw here to make the sword uh, more stable because with the only one screw, the sword, the, the Japanese uh, NCO copper handles are a little bit loose. They're not very tight. So they decided to implement that later on. So let's go ahead and remove the top screw with the two flat heads like this. And I have previously taken this Japanese NCO sword apart, so these are kind of loose. The screws are kind of loose. Usually the screws are very tight, and you're going to have to apply a little bit of pressure. There might be a chance that you can sort of mess the screws a little bit, so try to be very careful. <clears throat> and the next, I'm going to take this one off. I've, I have previously taken a, a, this screw off, so it's kind of loose. And but something I do is I hold the, the back of the screw, my finger, and it should come out. Otherwise, you're going to have to look for another smaller flathead. So you can take out this, this other screw here. And I brought this so I can take out this other screw by just gonna gently hammer the screw out 
So this is the screw for, from the top. And this is the screw from the middle, where the Makui should be. Now that all of that is it's out, it's going to be very easy for the handle to come off. And it has the same style as the Type 98 and Type 94 in any Japanese tank. Only difference is you're going to find a hole here and another little hole here on this side. Uh, but as you can see, this Japanese NCO sword is machine made, so there's no signature. There's no need to uh, take these Japanese swords apart. So let me go ahead and put it back together. So after you take this, uh, the Japanese NCO sword apart, it should be easier to take the Japanese sword apart and put it back together. You have to remember that these Japanese swords were made during World War II, so they're a hundred, over a hundred years old. So the, sh the screws are tight, there's rust, so it's not going to be easy to take them apart and there's a big chance that you can break them too. So. You have to take that in consideration where, when you're taking these Japanese swords apart. And also, you have to remember that there's not going to be any signature in, the, in this uh, NCO sword, so there's no reason why they should be taken apart. So thank you so much for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe into my uh, YouTube channel, The Samurai Monkey 42, so I can continue making these videos, and also go ahead and, uh, uh, go ahead and check me out on eBay in my eBay store, the Samurai Monkey 42, where I sell antique Japanese swords from World War II. And you can find just many other awesome stuff there. And thank you so much for those new subscribers. Sayonara.